is the fastest superhero? If you go into any comment section arguing about this nerdy point, one answer comes up pretty consistently. The Flash. The Flash is the fastest because it can run at light speed. I know you don't sound like that, but it's a cultural signifier of who sounds like an, a nerd or not. You get it. But while the Flash is fast, I don't think he's the fastest in all categories. Like, what if Nightcrawler challenged him to a race? The Flash is widely considered to be the fastest superhero because, duh, he's fast. He's so fast that he can stop time and sprint beyond light speed. However, Nightcrawler has a speed loophole. Because he travels between large distances in an instant, it mathematically makes him very fast as well. Is it fast enough? Before we have a race, we need to have assumptions. First, I'm gonna assume that the Flash moves at light speed because physics, a ferocious 300,000 kilometers per second. I'm also going to assume that he accelerates up to this speed instantaneously because I couldn't find any good comic book references for how fast he can get up to top speed. For Nightcrawler, dang it, oops, too far, too far, too far. For Nightcrawler, I'm going to assume a common teleportation distance of three kilometers, and I'm also going to assume that he can teleport mostly instantaneously, but not as quickly as the Flash does. Maybe way faster than human reaction time. For simplicity's sake, how about one millisecond? Okay, now it's time to race. Our first heat is Nightcrawler versus the Flash in the 3,000 meter dash. And go! I did not see anything happen. Let's check the finish line footage. All right, a closer look at the finish line. And go. Again, we cannot see anything happening. And that's because these two are moving so fast that our human vision can't register it. You would need a camera with a frame rate in the trillions to see the flash move. So let's run this race one more time and slow everything way down. Let's run this race again, except at one ten thousandth of the normal speed. 3,000 meter dash, Nightcrawler flash, and go. Hey, and there we go. At Nightcrawler's common teleportation distance, the Flash absolutely smokes him. <laughs> but Nightcrawler can teleport more than three kilometers. In Uncanny X-Men Volume 1, 467 through 468, Kurt is shown to be able to teleport up to 80 kilometers. So let's run this race one more time. This time, the 80,000 meter dash. Flash and Nightcrawler, go. After around two seconds, Flash crosses the finish line and it still takes... Nightcrawler around 10 seconds to finish. Still smoked. Is there any distance over which Nightcrawler could be faster? Well, in X-Men Second Coming, Kurt teleports himself in a dying effort a whopping 650 kilometers. So you know what we have to do. It's the 650,000 meter dash slowed down a thousand times. Nightcrawler, Flash, and go. And it's Nightcrawler followed by the Flash. Who got smoked now, Flashy boy? Now that we have the data, we can make a graph that will always show us who the winner and the loser of this race will be. Nightcrawler's maximum teleport distance is 650 kilometers, so that is where we're gonna end the graph on the x-axis. On the y-axis for time, we're gonna end it at 0.002 seconds, or just two milliseconds. These are fast races. It would be over before one of your neurons could fire twice. And now for the race data. At the intersection of these two lines should be the mathematical tipping point between a Nightcrawler win and a Flash win. According to our initial assumptions, that point is at exactly 300 kilometers. In a race between these two superheroes, our data says that if the finish line is under 300 kilometers away, the Flash will always win by running there at light speed. But if the finish line is further than 300 kilometers away, Nightcrawler's ability to teleport large distances very, very quickly means he is the winner. It's settled. The Flash is not always the fastest man on Earth. So, 
Who is faster, the Flash or Nightcrawler? It depends. If you use the same assumptions that I did, then the Flash is only faster over a certain distance, and beyond that distance, Nightcrawler is faster because of his ability to teleport long distances. However, if you use different assumptions, like the Flash can accelerate to light speed during this race, or that it takes Kurt Wagner longer to teleport, longer than a millisecond, then your conclusions change. But still, the Flash might not lose this race. It could take all of Nightcrawler's strength to teleport him far enough to beat the speedster, and then he would he would die. A purple, a purpley blue mess. I think it would be worth it, just because of the internet comments we could post afterwards. You know why. Thank you so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter at SciFile to suggest ideas for future episodes and on Instagram under the same handle where I'm now posting mini episodes like I did when this episode dropped today. And if you're not doing anything on Saturday nights, check out Mythbusters The Search on the Science Channel. I'm hosting it and we're looking for the next generation of Mythbusters. Uh, hope to see you there. But again, I won't act, I won't see, you'll see my eyes, but the fo the fo we won't. Tune in. Thanks to Ubisoft and their new melee combat game For Honor for sponsoring today's show. Choose your faction and battle it out as a member of the Knights, the Vikings, and a Samurai. With tons of heroes to choose from and maps to play on, be sure you don't miss For Honor. Available now. Go to forhonor.ubisoft.com to learn more and to pick up a copy. The Flash is the perfect example of some of the problems that most superheroes have to get around. If you want to save someone really quickly or with a lot of force, it would kill them. <laughs> the Flash moves so quickly that without some kind of protection, moving air out of the way, it would rip his clothes off and he'd be a little naked Flash boy running around. But also, if you tried to save someone moving at that speed, if they went from zero to near light speed in a fraction of a second, you would rip them in half. If you just grabbed an arm like, here, come with me, you'd look back and then it would just be, oh, that's just your arm or just your finger or just your thumb, just a nail. You have to work around that in some sci-fi explanation or, you know, for example, if you wanted to stop someone very quickly, like uh, catching them off, falling off of a building like Superman does, when they hit his steel-like arms falling from that height at terminal velocity, they would, they would snap in half like a, like, a, like a silly putty filled with a chicken bone. And that's something that you're never going to forget. <laughs>